How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and in this video, we're gonna take a look at 7 NBA players who recently retired or are close to retiring. These guys have had great careers, some with many all-star selections under their belt. However, in my opinion, they're just not quite there. For example, in the past, we've seen guys like Kevin Johnson, Tim Hardaway, Sean Kemp, Chauncey Billups, and even Chris Webber, although his scandal in college is probably keeping him out. Regardless, these guys had great careers, but despite being retired for many years, they still haven't made the Hall of Fame. It's possible they could in the future, some of them got close, but as of now, they haven't. In this video, we're going to take a look at 7 NBA players who could fall into the same category as those guys. Borderline Hall of Famers, but not quite there yet. We'll call it the Hall of Very Good. Keep in mind, I'm only going to go over current players who are older or recently retired ones. Not anybody in their primes, because they still have a lot of time ahead of them. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Number 7, Andre Iguodala. If Iggy didn't join Golden State, I honestly don't think he would have been close to making the Hall of Fame. His argument mainly comes from the fact that he has a Finals MVP and three championships. The only two Finals MVPs who are eligible for the Hall of Fame and haven't made it yet are Chauncey Billups and Cedric Maxwell. Still, his current resume isn't super impressive. I mean, only one All-Star appearance and two All-Defensive teams. I think because he got a lot of credit for saving the Warriors in the 2015 Finals, it was a huge boost to his legacy. Even though Curry was still their best player and perhaps Iguodala got more credit than he deserved. But he certainly had a huge impact when he was inserted into the starting lineup. In his best years in Philly, he hovered around 18 to 19 points a game, about 5 rebounds, about 5 assists. As the man on the team, he only led them past the first round once, and that was because Derrick Rose got injured. Personally, I don't think he's gonna make the Hall of Fame, and he's barely gonna make my Hall of Very Good. Number 6, Zach Randolph. Five different seasons of averaging over 20 points and 10 rebounds, nine different seasons of averaging a double-double, one of the biggest turnarounds we've ever seen from an NBA player in terms of mentality and reputation. Zebo started off his career as a young hothead in Portland, part of the notorious Jailblazers era. But over the years, he transformed himself into a true professional, and became the leader of a young Grizzlies team, leading them to their best playoff years in their franchise history. They were never really relevant before, even when they had Pau Gasol. Zebo turned it all around. Over his career, he accumulated over 18,000 points and 10,000 rebounds, joining a small, elite club of players. Unfortunately, his accolades and nominations are not impressive, with only two All-Star selections and the 2004 Most Improved Player Award, and only one All-NBA Team selection. But he did have a very memorable playoff series in 2011, where he dominated the first seed San Antonio Spurs. You could say his lack of awards was due to him playing in arguably the greatest era of power forwards. There just wasn't enough room for Zebo on the All-NBA teams, and he obviously was not as good as guys like Garnett, Nowitzki, or Duncan. Number 5, LaMarcus Aldridge. Aldridge is one of the younger guys on this list, and everything could change by the time his career is over. As of this video, at 34 years old, Aldridge has been a 7-time All-Star and 5-time All-NBA member. That's actually kinda crazy, he's one of the quietest perennial All-Stars in history. And the 5-time All-NBA teams, that's even more impressive, considering he's playing with so many great forwards, yet he's still making them. In fact, statistically, he's even better with the Spurs compared to his days in Portland, despite being older. With 7 seasons of averaging over 20 points a game and on his way to reaching 20,000 points, Aldridge has had a fantastic career so far, and he's not retiring anytime soon. But is he Hall of Fame worthy? I think part of what makes a player a Hall of Famer is not only their numbers, but the impact they've had on the game and the NBA landscape. Aldridge is a great, great player on both ends of the floor, and while he did have some amazing playoff games, he always did it low-key. For most of his career, he's been a star, but he just hasn't had the same historical impact as some of his peers did. Number 4, The Matrix, Sean Marion. 
Marion retired in 2015, so it was quite a few years ago. The Hall of Fame changed the requirement and allowed players who retired for four years to be eligible. So Marion was eligible for the 2019 Hall of Fame, and yet he wasn't even considered. Basketball Reference gives Marion a 76% chance to make the Hall of Fame. But 2019 was one of the weaker classes, so it's weird that Marion wasn't even nominated to be a finalist. Maybe it's gonna take a few years for him to get considered, but it's still a toss-up whether or not he'd make it. If you look at his numbers, he has a case. With the Phoenix Suns, he averaged 20 and 10 as a 6'7 combo forward. In his best year, he put up a ridiculous stat line that only two other players have accomplished in a single season, and those two players are Hakeem Olajuwon and David Robinson. Marion was a four-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, and surprisingly no All-NBA defensive teams. That was the biggest travesty of Marion's career. He single-handedly anchored the Suns' defense in the paint and in the wings all while being undersized, but he didn't get much credit since the team in general was not great defensively. A championship in 2011 adds to his legacy as he was the primary defender on LeBron James. But even then, many fans already forgot about that. He's only one of four players to record at least 17,000 points, 10,000 rebounds, 1,500 steals, and 1,000 blocks. The other three being Hakeem Olajuwon, Karl Malone, and Kevin Garnett. That's great company to be in. Number 3. Rajon Rondo Rondo's career has been quite interesting. Most of his memorable moments and greatest performances came when he was very, very young. His 2009 playoff run was one of the greatest we've ever seen, at just 23 years old. He nearly averaged a 17-point triple-double and carried the Celtics while Kevin Garnett was injured. While Rondo was mainly seen as the quarterback of the team behind their big three, he had his own great performances even later on with his short stints with the Bulls and the Pelicans. He was certainly an important player in their playoff runs. Although, he kinda screwed over the Mavs. Anyway, I think making the finals twice by the age of 24 has favored Rondo's legacy. After 2012, he tore his ACL and never had the same athleticism and speed again. His full resume right now consists of 4 All-Star appearances, 1 All-NBA team, 4 All-Defensive teams, 3 assist titles, and a championship in 2008. Plus a crap ton of memorable playoff games. Could he make the Hall of Fame? Well, based purely on name recognition and legacy, I think Rondo has a better case than most of these guys on the list. Take a guy like Reggie Miller for example. He was a Hall of Famer because during the playoffs, he would turn it up like 10 notches but his overall number of accolades were not super impressive. I think Rondo's case is kinda similar to Reggie's. Guys who have some accolades and some awards, but what they're really known for were some of their ridiculous playoff games. Right now, Rondo is only 33 years old, so he still has a few years left. But will an extra 4 or 5 years of Rondo maintaining his current status as a role player, will it make any difference? Another championship could be possible, but I doubt he's getting any more individual awards. Number 2, Amari Stoudemire. Amari is the only player on this list who was a legit superstar for many years. He started multiple times in the All-Star game, led the league in true shooting efficiency, and was overall an incredible offensive player. He had the face-up game, he could take you off the dribble, he can dunk it over you, and he had a silky mid-range jump shot. Fun fact, for his career, he shot 43% on his long twos. Among power forwards, only Dirk Nowitzki rivaled his efficiency. Stoudemire was a 6-time All-Star, 5-time All-NBA, the 2003 Rookie of the Year, but he retired relatively early, at just 33 years old, well, from the NBA, that is. Perception plays a role in Hall of Fame nominations, too and during his best years in Phoenix, he was always seen as the second guy on the team behind Steve Nash. After retirement, he played in the Israeli League and led them to a championship in 2017, which was something that really meant a lot to him. International accomplishments hold some weight when it comes to Hall of Fame inductions, so this could give him an extra boost as well. However, I think he's right on the border between the Hall of Very Good and the Hall of Fame. Number 1, Joe Johnson. I made a whole video dedicated to Joe Johnson before. Just to show how he compares to other players in the Hall of Fame, his numbers definitely give him a chance. 
Out of every eligible player who scored over 20,000 points, only Antoine Jameson and Tom Chambers are not in the Hall of Fame. Joe Johnson has over 20,000 points too, along with 7 All-Star selections. He's definitely up there with LaMarcus Aldridge in terms of being under the radar. He also recently signed with the Pistons, so now he can keep climbing the points leaderboard. Joe is also only one of 13 players who are in the 20k, 5k, 5k club. Everyone else on this list is a Hall of Famer, or they're going to be once eligible. So overall, Joe has a great case. In my opinion, it's going to take a long time for Joe to get inducted, since there are many players ahead of him who still haven't gotten in. So I think he's going to remain in the Hall of Very Good for a while. Anyway, those are the 7 players in my Hall of Very Good. Also, quick honorable mentions to Mello and Dwight. A lot of people have been harsh on them in recent years and think that they're not Hall of Famers, but in my opinion, they are without question Hall of Famers. There's no way they're not getting in. Likely, they're going to be first or second ballot Hall of Famers. They were too good in their primes and have a ton of accolades and nominations. Anyway, that's all folks. That sums up the video and let me know your thoughts on these players. I think there's a good chance most of these guys will get into the Hall eventually, whether it be a few years from now or a few decades. Who do you think will have the best chances of getting in? Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.